Hello everyone, in today's video I'm going to be making some custom camera mounts for my Radiolink RC 4G transmitter. There are a lot of times when I'll be driving and filming at the same time, such as the previous video that I uploaded where I was doing some off-road driving in the 110 scale crawlers. To film those shots, I either place the camera on the ground and have where I'm driving in frame, or I'll hold the transmitter in one hand and the camera in the other, which requires me to drive the truck using only one hand. This isn't the easiest thing to do, even with this little 3D printed piece that I secured to the steering wheel using a battery strap. To hopefully make filming a little easier, I wanted to have a way to secure the camera to the transmitter so that I can have both hands to drive, but still be able to film. Many other RC content creators use a transmitter mounted camera to film, and it's been suggested that I give it a try. This was a relatively quick and easy project, especially compared to what I normally do on this channel, but I thought it was worth making a little video about for anyone who's interested in doing something similar and maybe to get some ideas and inspiration from what I've done. As I said at the very beginning of this video, the transmitter that I'm using is a Radiolink RC4G. It's a relatively lower cost 4 channel transmitter that contains a pretty impressive amount of features and settings options. It also has memory for up to about a dozen receivers, so this one transmitter can be used for many different vehicles that I have, as long as they are all using a compatible Radiolink receiver. Although I consider designing a mount that would be specifically designed to fit this transmitter and be sort of a bolt-on or press fit design, I decided to go with two mounts that would fit on the flat parts on the top and bottom of the transmitter. These mounts will need something to secure them to the transmitter, either using something like an adhesive or Velcro or possibly a strong double-sided tape, but these mounts will be more universal and really easy to design and install. Also, there won't be any hardware necessary, aside from these parts that were included with the action camera that I'm using. I'll basically be copying the design of the black mount that the action camera uses. This is how the camera will be secured to the mounts that I make. I'm using a generic action camera called the Firefly 7S, which I believe uses the same mounts as GoPros and most other similar action cameras. So this design should be pretty universal if I decide to get some different cameras in the future. Since I wanted to have a mount on this bottom section, I roughly decided where I wanted to have the camera positioned so that it doesn't get in the way of the throttle. I also took a few measurements so I know how big to make the base of this lower mount. I already had the part where the bolt slides through to secure the camera designed from a previous project, so I used that to start. I'll be uploading just this mounting section on its own onto Patreon in an editable file format for anyone else who might like to use it as a starting point. I lost the screen capture of me actually designing the mount, but fortunately the design process was pretty simple, so hopefully just scrolling through the design history gives you an idea of how I designed these mounts. I made one mount for the bottom section of the transmitter, and then I copied and shortened it to make the mount for the top. I also designed a mount for an old Samsung smartphone I have, which I'll either use to record or see what the action camera is filming through an app. And that's all it took to design these mounts. I wasn't trying to make anything fancy, I just wanted it to be strong and functional. After the design was complete, I printed each part. I used black PLA since it's very easy to print and I was confident it would provide the strength needed. I used supports for all the parts and I split the phone mount into two pieces to make it easier to print.
I made sure both the camera and phone would fit. Originally, I planned on gluing each half of the phone mount together. However, once each side is secured to the phone, the fit is tight enough that it's not really necessary. Both mounts turned out great, and both the phone and camera fit very well. The phone is maybe a little tighter fit than what I'd want, but at least I can be extra sure that it won't fall out. If you wanted, I'm sure you could buy some similar mounts to what I've made here, but where's the fun in that? To secure each mount to the transmitter, I used some quick set epoxy. Although this is a more permanent way to mount them, versus using something like Velcro, I really want them to be securely mounted, and I don't mind if it's permanent. I just made sure to glue each mount on either side of the transmitter and not in the center, since that is how the transmitter comes apart. I don't want to make the transmitter non-serviceable by gluing each half together. Maybe it's just me, but I think this transmitter looks way cooler than it did before. Regardless though, it's certainly more functional now, and I'm looking forward to being able to film while driving with two hands. Although having both the phone and camera attached does add some weight to the transmitter, it's fortunately not too bad overall. Plus it's easy enough to remove them while I'm not filming. Of course, I couldn't resist doing a quick test. With an app on the phone, I could see what the action camera is seeing right there on the phone rather than having to look down to the tiny screen on the camera. I can also adjust settings and start recording much easier as well. I drove around the Challenger some, and although it's hard to both film and drive a little car that's moving around the track pretty quick, I started to get better at keeping it in frame and I got some pretty decent shots. I didn't have much light set up in this room, so please pardon the grainy footage. I think this setup will be a lot more effective when I'm out crawling, which is much slower paced, and generally I'm filming much larger vehicles. It'll take some getting used to, but it's so much nicer not having to drive with one hand and film with the other.
It's a fun little project that I thought I'd share with all of you, and I wanted to complete before the Ultimate Scale Truck Expo, where I'll be doing quite a bit of filming. The STL files will be posted on Patreon for anyone who's interested. I hope you enjoyed this video, and thank you very much for watching.